Okay, so we are, this is part, part two of lecture two, and we're going to look at the practice questions for these, for significant figures. So I want you to take a look at this list um, and write down quickly in your notes how many significant figures are in each. Pause the lecture while you do that, and then I will get back to you and tell you how many are in each. So pause now, write down your stuff. Okay, 903.2 is four sig figs, 0 0.0090 is two significant figures, 0 0.007 is one, 0 0.02 is one, 90.3 is three, 0.0900 is three, 900.0 is four, 0 0.0080 is two, 70 is 1, 99 is 2, point zero four nine is 2, and 5.0002 is 5. Okay, some rules for adding and subtracting significant figures. Number one, your calculated value can't be more precise than the least precise quantity used in the calculations. Two, your result will have the same number of digits to the right of the decimal point as that of the least precise quantity. Do not round your calculations until the end. So now we're going to practice with that. So let's say we have 7.939 plus 6.26 plus 11.1. .1. Well, when you add these all together in your calculator, you get 25.299. And now you have to um, use the rules for adding and subtracting significant figures. So you'll see that the least number of decimals after the decimal point is one. So you have to write, get the right significant figures. The lowest number is one, therefore your answer is 25.3. So here's some significant figures practice. I want you to practice with this material I'm going to give you the answer to the first one, and then the other two you can check with me for, over email or by office hours. Okay, so if we take 10.3 plus 0 0.01345, we add them together, and then we have to round that answer, so we get 10.31345, and then the nearest one to the decimal point is one digit after, so we round it up to 10.3. Now I want you to do these next two, 31.5 plus 0.94 plus 63, and then 1.34 plus 98.1. Go ahead and try those out, and if you're not sure of your answers, again, see me by email or during office hours and check your answers with me, and I'll be happy to help you. When you multiply and divide, it's different than the addition and subtraction, because you take the number of significant figures is the same as the total number of significant figures of the lowest number of sig figs. So it's not the number after the decimal point, it's the number total. So let's take a look at this one. We're going to multiply 27.2 times 15.63. Well, when we multiply that out, we get 425.136. The lowest number of sig figs total is 3 because 27.2 has 3 significant figures. Therefore, we round and you're new answer is 425 in the correct significant figures. Okay, let's take a look at some practice ones. Again, I'm going to do number one with you, and then you're responsible for doing number two and three on your own. And again, if you want to check your answers, see me during office hours, or send me your answers by email and I'll be happy to check them. So the first one is 10.3 times 0.1345, so same digits we had before, just we're multiplying this time. And your answer is 1.39 because you have three significant figures in 10.3. Now I want you to take some time and multiply 9.3689 times 45.0 and then 10.14 times 5.27201. Keep in mind you should always have a calculator with you while listening to these lectures because it will help you speed up your response time. It'll help you speed up your note taking and it'll also help you to understand the concepts a little more than trying to go back and doing it later. Okay, so go ahead and practice those, and again, check your answers if you need to. 
When you combine addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, you first apply the rules for adding and subtracting, and then apply the rules for multiplying and dividing. The order of operations still applies, though. So that's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, or PEMDAS. So let's take a look at this one. We have 10.3 plus 0.01345 quantity plus 10.3 times 0.01345 quantity. So when we do those together, we end up with a total answer of 10.5. Similarly, I want you to try out number two and number three. Remember your order of operations rules. Finally, scientific notation is using exponents. The standard form is a whole number, then a decimal, plus exponents. So 5.29 times 10 to the eighth would be standard form for this amount, not 5, 2, 9, and then 6 more zeros. Okay, so that is 529 billion. Okay, so we're going to change these to standard form. So 204, standard form is 2.04 times 10 to the second. 12.89 is 1.289 times 10 to the first. Although, when you get to standard form, it's a little picky. I mean, if it's 12.89, you really don't have to do it, but if it was 128.9, you would. Okay, 0 0.007 is 7.0 times 10 to the negative third. 0 0.00569 is 5.69 times 10 to the negative third, and 46,359.23 ends up 4.6352923 times 10 to the fourth, which is just moving the decimal point around. So, we're going to practice these now. Go ahead and do this, and I will um, flash your answers up in just a second. So pause the lecture while you're working on this. And now that we're back from the pause, here are your standard notations. So make sure that yours actually matched with this. Okay, some terms you need for chemistry. Matter is anything that ma has mass and occupies space. I've defined this now three times. It's a little bit important. Mass is the quantity of matter in a substance, and density is the mass divided by its volume. Energy is the ability to be do work. Potential energy is stored energy, such as in a wound spring, or energy in wood before it's burned. Kinetic, e kinetic energy is the energy in motion, such as a car zipping along. Okay, going back to solving problems. When you solve problems, there are very specific rules that you need to follow in order to answer them correctly. Number one is to diagram the situation and list the data. Two, select the appropriate formula. Three, substitute in the formula. Four, solve on the calculator. And five, do the units or the sig figs. So here's the way we do that. So we're going to find the density of a sample whose mass is 25.0 grams and whose volume is 82.3 centimeters cubed. So we take the density equals mass times volume. That's our formula. Now we're going to substitute in the formula 25.0 grams divided by 82.3 centimeters cubed. We get our answer, which is 0 0.304 grams per centimeter cubed. Our units are in grams per centimeters cubed, so we're good there. And then we do it in standard notation, which is 3.04 times 10 to the negative 1 grams per centimeter squared. Or, sorry, centimeter cubed. Remember that density equals mass over volume and can be algebraically manipulated. So you're going to find the mass of a sample whose density is 8.2 grams per centimeter cubed and whose volume is 52.0 centimeters cubed. So our first step is to write D equals M over V. Then we multiply by V over 1 on each side, and your result formula is mass equals volume times density. Our mass is 52.0 centimeters cubed times 8.2 grams per centimeters cubed. So because the centimeters cubed are on two sides of the, di uh, the dividing line, you can cross those out as units, and you end up with 426 grams. Our units are grams, so we're good. Go ahead and try the next one on your own and see what you get. And again, you can check that with me. 
when you do density problems like this, they can be a lot of fun and you can end up getting some really interesting stacking going on. Um, not something I'd recommend. It takes a while to do this and it's really, really kind of annoying and delicate, but it is kind of cool. Okay, that is the end of lecture two. Make sure you try the practice quizzes and see me during office hours for any questions. Have a great day.